Hello, welcome and good evening. And today I want to do something that I already did and already videoed, but I'm going to do it again because it's um, so much fun and some things went wrong in the first place. So what do we want to do? We have this floppy emulator here, the GoTag USB floppy emulator that you already know from a previous episode. Um, but this one is a black one because it matches the black case that I got for the 286. And we're gonna flash it with an alternative firmware. The original firmware is works, obviously, but it uses some proprietary software that comes on a teeny tiny CD and is absolutely, well, not that not that great to use and Windows only, etc. Um, the original firmware uses a weird partitioning format on the USB thumb drive and yeah, it's not easy, you can't just drop disk images on the thumb drive. And that's why we want to do it differently now. Um, we want to use the Flash Floppy open source firmware, which allows you to put like any kind of firmware on there, uh, any kind of disk images, sorry, on there um, that you can get or make yourself. Obviously, all the illegal stuff goes on here. And how does it work? Well, if you take a closer look here on the PCB, there are some empty headers here that we will solder in right now. And those allow you to program the microcontroller that's in here. And you can do this um, by some USB to serial adapter. I have multiple ones here. First about this one, it contains a prolific IC, but it needs drivers for Windows and Mac. Linux probably comes with a kernel drive already, so you're good to go. They are only two euros or something. Then there's this one that a friend gave me. Um, let's see if we can focus. It's an FTDI TTL232R, an original FTDI. Um, disadvantage of these is they are expensive. Let's refocus. Um, and I got this only because he borrowed it. Um, it works fine, I tested it. And the next best thing is this here. It's, I think, not an original FTDI, but it also works without a driver. I will link to the thing that I got here in the video description. It says USB DTL STC ISP. And as I said, it works without a driver. So also costs like two euros or something, two to three euros. So they are, those are the cheap alternatives. And the FTDI is the more expensive one. This can cost anywhere from 10 to 50 euros, depending on if you get the bare board or the one with the wire attached to it and whole thing, basically. Okay, so um, let's open up this thing and start soldering in the headers. <laughs> All right, this was uh, easy enough. So let's go in here and take a little look. Let's refocus. So maybe you can see it. Um, these are the new headers. And up here, there's the left one, the J3. The two ones are the boot jumper. You have to jump at this. And usually these things come with a little baggie which contains a few extra screws and some jumpers screws for mounting, obviously. And right next to that is J4, which has the receive and transmit pins for the uh, microcontroller, which is up here. This is a little ARM-based STM microcontroller. And um, the two vertical ones are reset. The three other ones you don't have to be concerned right now with yet. All right, other than that, there are some settings as well, but you don't have to touch them. Here's the floppy interface, and here's the 5 volt Molex connector. Basically, make sure to connect it correctly because I did not, and I fried my USB thumb drive with it. Okay, furthermore, there's this breakout thing which contains the uh, digital display. We can later 
replace it with an OLED display with a new flash floppy firmware. I'm not going to do it now, probably for a later video as well. Yeah, other than that, this is it. Um, let's reassemble it and put it um, on our computer to flash. Okay, here it is wired up to the cheap device that I showed you before. And it's got, let's focus, focus, focus. Yeah, it's got um, every pin labeled, so we need 5 volts uh, transmit TXT. Let's put it the other way around so you can actually see it. TXT, RXT, and ground. Plus 5 volt, I put on red, as usual, black is ground. Receive is yellow, and transmit is orange. And those go on here. Make sure not to confuse plus 5 and ground, otherwise you get a big bang, probably. And then TX and RX, if you mess those up, put them on the other way, doesn't matter, you can just uh, redo them, because then the flashing just simply won't work. And you need to attach the boot jumper, as I said. After that, you can attach this to your computer. There are some signal LEDs. Focus, please. Yes, some signaling LEDs here, which show you the status. So, should be easy enough. Let's go. Okay, what do you need? So first of all you need to download Flash Floppy version 0.11 or higher or whatever version is currently available. I will link to the repository on GitHub in the video description. It contains uh, most importantly this piece of software here, the uh, hex file, which is the firma file, some readme and some other versions of this thing. Um, if you want to do a DFU update, etc. But I won't go into this detail here. We will do the program via serial. So we need that one, definitely. And then we need STM32 Flash, which on Mac and Linux you can easily install via Brew or your favorite package manager. So we will just install STM32 Flash, which is exactly written for this microcontroller on this floppy emulator. And it can read and write to those devices. Um, yeah, Homebrew wants to update. It will take a few seconds to install, so I'll explain shortly. Ah, oh, yeah, here we are. It's already done. Um, furthermore, um, after you attach your uh, serial device, it should list up under dev as dev t2 USB serial at least on macOS, and a similar name on Linux. For Windows, you have to use probably a proprietary software from STMicro. Um, so I highly suggest you use Linux for doing that because it's the most easiest, or if you have a Mac, just use a Mac. Otherwise you have to register with STM and download the example Flash software and stuff like that. It's um, a bit more complicated, but you will probably also figure it out. Okay, now that we have this thing, we can simply try to call STM32 Flash. It's got a ton of options. so. Most easily, we will just run it with the um, USB serial device we got here, and it successfully connected to this device. So we wired it up correctly, everything seems to work. We probably want to read out the current software and put it to um, gotek backup.hex or something, but it will fail with an error and it will say target is write protected, because even when reading out the firmware you need to unprotect this thing. And that you do via the dash k switch. It will unprotect the flash memory and then we can actually pull down the old firmware, because maybe you want to go back to the original firmware and then it's good to have a backup. Um, this takes a while because this is actually a serial protocol with 57,000 bits per second and that is really slow. And honestly, this was exactly the speed that we used back in the days when we still had modems. And I will try to make a little video at the same time here of the um, USB interface. Yeah, it will be glowing fantastically. And you will see the actual flickering of the bits going over the line. And it's really slow. Yeah, I'll cut that in here. 
Seems to have worked. Um, so, 90%, we're almost done. So you have to bit, be a bit patient. And here it is. Okay, now we have the GoTag backup hacks file, and we can also write to the disk, to the disk, yeah, to the, to the microcontroller with the write option. And we tell it to write the new firmware, the flash floppy GoTag firmware dot hex, and we want to verify what was written because uh, there's no such thing worse than a broken microcontroller. And now it's the other way around, and it's well reasonably fast, but similarly will take a minute or so to finish. And the flashing is even better because now the blue transmit LED is blinking as crazy. Yeah. So after that, you can simply detach the device and um, put it in your PC. And we will have a look at what it can actually do in a minute. But um, first we will be talking about configuration of these devices because you can put a config file on the USB thumb drive to tweak a few things. Okay, it's done. It was successful. Now let's see what else we can do with it. Okay, I formatted a USB thumb drive, put four images on there, Space Quest, the three installation disks, and Maniac Mansion on a disk. And you can see I used 1.4 megabyte images, but this thing will eat basically any sized image, as long as it's a reasonable uh, sector layout, which is DOS compatible. However, right from the start, this thing won't work on an IBM PC. You can and you have to um, basically add a configuration file called ff.config and we will just edit it and you can put all kinds of configurations in here even stuff for uh, certain images only and a lot of stuff that is documented in the wiki of this thing and uh, the one thing that you want to do is to set the interface the floppy interface here to IBM PC and we do this simply by typing interface equals IBM PC. Um, make a new line, save, and that's basically it. After you put this on there, make sure that it's here, ff.config. You can actually use this thing in the PC without any problems. So let's just do that. Okay, first thing we have to do is enter the SEMA setup or at least uh, if you haven't had a floppy drive in there before, run the SEMA setup and set the floppy drive A or B, depending on where you attached your GoTech emulator, to 1.44 megabytes, 3.5 inch. I've already done this because I tried it before, as I said, and then we can just boot into DOS as usual. And hopefully you have attached your thumb drive of choice as well to the GoTech then you should be able to actually run the dir command. And yeah, look at that, we have SpaceQuest actually on there. And yeah, I think we can either try to copy stuff. Uh, let's go to the temp directory and copy everything from the A drive to here. Let's see if it works and it should be actually as slow as a real floppy drive because it pretty accurately emulates those. And as you can see, it runs reasonably well, but it's only 600 kilobytes. So yeah, this should take about half a minute at roughly 20 kilobytes per second. And that's the speed that you can expect from floppy disks. And just to put that into perspective, these are 20 kilobytes per second, while these days you get something like one or two gigabytes per second from an SSD drive. This is roughly more than a million times faster. So that's a crazy advance in the, in the technology in the last 40 years. Okay, that did work. Um, fine. Um, let's try to run the actual game as well for testing.
yeah, as you can see, it already takes quite a while to load up because now everything has come from the fluffy drive, but Space Quest 3 will still run from fluffy drive just fine. Although it's not really a lot of fun, so yeah, even with Adlibs on it works. Tune down the sound here a bit. Rather loud. Yeah, so I would suggest that you definitely check out the Flash Floppy firmware because it's so much better than the original firmware and lets you drop on the thumb drive any image that you can get hold of. And it's actually rather easy to uh, flash, and the hardware needed is only the 2 euro worth of uh, USB serial adapter soldering iron that you probably already have in the home, hopefully. Yeah, and then as you've seen, it's only open source software that you can download from, from Brew or your package menu of choice. So, that about wraps it up, what I wanted to show you, and Hopefully we can mod this further with the OLED display and other stuff, but this will be for a later time. So thanks for watching, please share, like and subscribe if you want to, and other than that have a nice evening and see you next time.